After launching some New Year's fireworks of its own on Tuesday, SpaceX has also embarked on preparation for the return of Booster 7. Having said that, new year, new gear. A very interesting new device is being assembled at the launch complex near the orbital launch mount and SPMTs loaded with tons of counterweights underneath the orbital launch mount. As always, huge thanks to Starship Gazer for capturing the photos. Kevin Randolph also shared other views of the new device via Twitter. His efforts are much appreciated as well. According to Randolph, that's a lot of counterweights under the OLM for the low test that's being theorized. With the hydraulics, they can lift the counterweights and suspend them from two clamps at a time. It's not yet clear if these will be incorporated along with a booster to simulate a full methalox load or be used alone. Regardless, some believed that this is a static test rig to ensure that the OLM can physically handle the forces of a 33-engine static fire before they light the candle. SpaceX now just has two test windows. The primary date is Friday, January 6th, and the alternative date is Monday, January 9th of 2023. So, in case SpaceX just wants to simulate a fully-fueled 5,000-ton Starship for the first time on the OLM, most likely they will complete this stress test in the next few days. Then, Booster 7 could be rolled back to the launch site by mid-January. And although it makes Starship's launch in January of 2023 looking less and less likely, don't be discouraged. It will happen, and will have a better chance of success when they do launch. Notably, the assembly line is still moving even if the testing doesn't seem to be keeping along with the pace. Ship 25's payload door cover has been moved to the high bay, where sealing is likely imminent. Meanwhile, Ship 26 after finishing off a productive day at the production site, has been removed from the welding turntable in the high bay. It'll now be outfitted with other pieces, such as its raceway. Ship 28's common dome has been flipped outside of the Star Factory this morning, providing an excellent view inside of the dome. This now means all three domes for S-28 are sleeved and flipped. Interestingly enough, this did not happen inside of the factory itself. This suggests that that there may not be enough room inside. The bridge crane used for flipping could be busy or a variety of other things. No matter what, this is a very welcome thing to see flip again. And all of these updates wouldn't be possible if it weren't for Lab Padre and the Ring Watcher and their constant effort in providing us those said updates. Big thanks to them. Perhaps only if the OLM has all of its issues resolved, testing could likely be ramped up to match the assembly pace. But what's more amazing, besides SpaceX's Starship, numerous other rockets may take flight for the first time in 2023. The most important, Vulcan Centaur by United Launch Alliance, will eventually replace the company's Atlas V, a rocket that has been central to American spaceflight for two decades. The Vulcan relies on the BE-4 engine built by Blue Origin, the rocket company founded by Jeff Bezos. The same engine will in turn be used in Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket, which may have a test flight late this year. A number of American private companies are expected to test new rockets in 2023, including Relativity and ABL. They could be joined by foreign rocket makers, including Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which could test Japan's H-3 rocket in February, and Ariane Space, which is working toward a test flight of Europe's Ariane 6 rocket. We're guaranteed at least one lunar landing attempt in 2020. A Japanese company, iSpace, launched its M1 mission on a SpaceX rocket in December. It's taking a slow, fuel-efficient route to the moon and is set to arrive in April, where it'll try to deploy a rover built by the United Arab Emirates, a robot built by Japan's space agency, JAXA, as well as other payloads. There could be as many as five more lunar landing attempts this year. NASA has hired a pair of private companies to carry payloads to the lunar surface. Both of them, Intuitive Machines of Houston and Astrobotic Technology of Pittsburgh, faced delays in 2022 but may make the trip in the coming months. They could be joined by three government space programs' lunar missions. India's Chandrayaan-3 mission was delayed last year but could be ready in 2023. A Japanese mission, Smart Lander for Investigating Moon, or SLIM, aims to test the country's lunar landing technologies. Finally, Russia's Luna 20 
2025 mission was postponed from last September, but Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, may try again this year. On the other hand, the Webb telescope wowed space enthusiasts and scientists with its views of the cosmos in 2022. But we may get new vantage points from a variety of orbital observatories this year. The most significant may be Suntian, a Chinese mission setting off later in the year that will be like a more sophisticated version of the Hubble Space Telescope. The spacecraft will survey the universe at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths in an orbit around Earth close to the country's Tiangong Space Station. A Japanese-led mission, XRISM, pronounced CRISM, will launch earlier in the year as well. The mission will use X-ray spectroscopy to study clouds of plasma, which could help to explain the universe's composition. A European space telescope, Euclid, may also launch on a SpaceX rocket after the Russian invasion of Ukraine resulted in the spacecraft losing its seat on a Russian Soyuz rocket. It'll study the universe's dark energy and dark matter. Two main and one minor planetary missions are due to leave Earth in 2023. ESA, or ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, will launch on an Ariane 5 rocket in April in order to arrive at Jupiter in October of 2029. JUICE will examine all the Galilean moons up close. The mission will overlap with NASA's Europa Clipper, which will launch for the Jupiter system in late 2024. NASA's Psyche will depart in October aboard a Falcon Heavy rocket for the enigmatic metal asteroid 16 Psyche. If the mission goes off as planned, the mission will reach the rock in mid-2029. Finally, Rocket Lab may launch MIT's ambitious Venus mission in May. If it launches as scheduled from Mahia Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand, it'll arrive at Venus in late 2023. The mission will drop a small probe into the Venusian atmosphere. And after all of that, if all goes according to plan, we are set to witness a thrilling set of space launches, liftoffs, and more in what promises to be an adventurous year for the space industry. Of course, we must issue the standard disclaimer on space plans for 2023 or any other year. Schedules will change, and launches will experience delays or even be cancelled entirely due to politics, budgets, or technical issues. But spaceflight will surely expand in 2023 to Earth orbit and beyond. And that's about it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.